Peace be with you. Welcome to our virtual worship for this fifth Sunday of Lent. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the resurrection and the life. As we worship you, show us who we are, bearers of good news, messengers of your resurrection. Amen. Throughout Lent, we have been following the Old Testament readings in order to follow the story of God's unfolding steadfast loving kindness from creation to Jesus, and to hear our own stories in our ancient family story. Over the last few Sundays, we have heard how even after the first humans lost paradise, God continued to provide for them and pursue them, bringing a people to birth from a childless couple, Abram and Sarai, freeing their descendants from the living death of slavery in Egypt, and providing for their needs as they wandered in the wilderness. We heard last week, when King David was chosen, how God is not impressed with a polished exterior, but instead looks at the heart for a heart that is open and trusting. The Old Testament reading for today comes from the prophet Ezekiel. His vision is given for a people who have lost heart, who are suffering a living death in exile in a foreign land. Their temple has been destroyed, their holy city plundered, their leaders maimed and put in chains their soldiers put to the sword, and their young men and women either killed or dragged off into a foreign land. Ezekiel witnesses the soul of his people gradually wither and die, becoming as lifeless as a valley of dry bones. His vision of the valley of dry bones reminds every generation that God not only gives life but restores life, that death will not have the last word, even when all signs of life have been taken away. Let us listen for God's word to us this day from Ezekiel 37, 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, 
I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Our bones are dried up, our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. That's what the whole house of Israel says here in Ezekiel. In today's gospel reading from John 11, Mary and Martha say to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, when they think Jesus has arrived too late to help their brother Lazarus. Do you ever find yourself engaged in this kind of honest conversation with God? Lord, I am hopeless and cut off. If you had only been here, this is not how I expected things to turn out. I am worn out. Have you ever mustered the boldness to complain to God? Or are you worried that that is somehow an act of unbelief, of unfaithfulness? Did you know Complaint and lament actually belong to the language of faith. Look through the Psalms. You'll find in at least one third of them, someone complaining their way to belief. The Psalm for today, 130, says, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Or as the translation, the message says, help God. The bottom has fallen out of my life. Master, hear my cry for help. Listen hard, open your ears, listen to my cries for mercy. Complaining, lamenting, is an act of faith. It is an act of belief because we're declaring our confidence in God's ability to act and our disappointment that God has not acted according to our expectations. In this morning's reading, there's a temptation to move quickly to the good part, the part about the joy of new and vibrant life of renewal, restoration, resurrection. We want to skip over the dry, barren landscape. But sometimes that is exactly where we are. And to not acknowledge it, to God especially, is to be less than honest with ourselves and God. It is in the dry, barren place that the spirit begins to renew, revive, and restore. This is the where the spirit brings new life. In this second week of distancing and disruption and disappointment, I realized that I was really sad. Sad about the collective anxiety and fear experienced by so many sad about the innumerable disappointments as schools are closed and concerts and events and celebrations are postponed or canceled. Sad about the disruption of our own gathering face to face, especially as we anticipate Holy Week and Easter. The voices of the Israelites of Mary and Martha and of the psalmist have given me language and reminded me how helpful the act of complaint and lament can be. 
Our cries are not too much for God. God laments with us. In fact, God wants us to come into God's presence with our anger, in our fear, in our loneliness, in our hurt, in our confusion. This is one of our Christian spiritual practices that nurtures resilience, naming what our experience is and how we truly feel in order to make a request of God and trust that God will act, bringing light to darkness, life to dry bones, and resurrection from death. Ezekiel's vision begins with the lament of God's people and ends with God's action, with the Spirit bringing new life. I hope in this challenging time that you have seen glimpses of resurrection as people all across the globe come together and not only weep and wail and mourn, but offer comfort and celebrate small kindnesses and share what they have for the sake of others with less. Easter is coming, and nothing, nothing will stop God's power and plan to bring new life out of despair and death. But in the meantime, in this in-between time, we can, as an act of faith, weep with those who weep. Mourn the mounting communal losses together and cry out to God in prayer for help with hope. Confident that God is always at work bringing light to the darkness, life to dry bones, and resurrection from death. The psalmist concludes his lament with, wait and watch for God. With God's arrival comes love. With God's arrival comes generous redemption. To the glory of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Let us pray. Out of the depths, we cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our voices and be attentive to our prayers. We pray for those whose hope is lost, who feel dried up and cut off from you. By your grace, open their graves, bring them back to the land of the living. We pray for those who are oppressed, held captive by the power of death. Release them from their chains, unbind them and let them go. We pray for those who weep, lost and lifeless in fear and regret. Grant them the peace of your presence. Show them what your love can do. Holy God, giver of life, we thank you for raising us up and joining us together as one people, your people, flesh and bone in the body of Christ. As you have delivered us from death, use our lives to proclaim the good news of new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you for having heard our prayers. Enable us to trust in you and to see your glory. Through Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life. And we pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the grace of God be with us all now and always. Amen.